the plants are actually feeding off of just the fish waste. Once the system's balanced, it takes care of itself. You can take care of a goldfish, you can know exactly what we're doing back there. A lot of times if people want to garden, they grow in spite of the desert. We chose to grow with the desert instead. And that's it. That's how you transfer a plant in aquaponics. My family's never been closer. I wish I would have started this when I was a little kid. Think big, don't be intimidated. Think big and think outside of the box. The beauty to hydroponics is you can actually use the earth itself to help you grow your system. My name is Charles Collins and I'm a sustainable gardener. Now these are all raised from fry. This is about a 350 gallon tank. We have roughly 100 tilapia inside the tank. And right about now, I think it's time we feed them. We feed them once a day. They produce the pee, the poop. The water flows through the system and gravity brings it through this pipe here. It then comes out into this upper grow bed, which is about 12 inches deep. And we use three quarter inch scoria lava rock because that brings a really good substrates and a really good surface for the bacteria to grow. The nitrates and the nitrites in the um, fish poop get broken down by bacteria. The bacteria makes their little colonies within your substrate. The substrate then makes that food for the plants. The plants in return use their roots to clean out all of the hard and solid waste from the fish waste. It goes through your entire system and gets put right back into the fish tank fresh and clean. As the water makes its way through the first grow bed, it then comes out into the second grow bed. The plants are actually feeding off of just the fish waste. The nitrogen gets broken down, which is what the plants are actually eating. Once the system's balanced, it takes care of itself. Now you might be asking yourself, why fish? Fish are a sustainable form of protein. And in our case, we use tilapia because they're fast growing and they actually self-control their populations in the tank. So it's never too full, plus they are delicious if you grow them correctly. They've got a bad reputation and I really wanna work towards helping clear that up because guys, it's something that we could all be doing at our homes. We don't wanna rely on the big markets and the big box stores and things of that nature. We wanna know where our food source is coming from. Grow, be a part of the desert, not in spite of it, all right? Granted, that's an obstentious pool back there. That's really, really big and it kinda goes against everything we're doing, but before we started gardening, we kind of lived in the desert, we wanted a pool. So um, although we have the pool, that's not even the focus point, the focal point of our property anymore. You all right, guys? Yeah? You okay? Hey, Kevin. Before you say, okay, how can you be best friends with a pig? Have you ever hung out with a pig? All right, now hang out with a pig and then come back to me. All right, and we'll discuss it because pigs rock. If you're ever upset, look, trust me, you can be as mad as you want, but if you ever give a pig lettuce and listen to him chew, it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> pig poop is a tremendous source of fertilizer. These guys provide poop for us. I get to hang out with chickens and pigs, dude. What's not cool about that? There you go. If I just knew that they were the closest cousins, the Tyrannosaurus rexes, so if I could have a little T-Rex walking around my yard, why not? It's awesome. Chickens are the gift that keeps on giving. On average, four to five eggs a day. They also provide us a rich source of nitrogen for the soil. These can be stored and refrigerated for up to a year without being treated. The chicken waste, we scoop that up, we um, put it into our composter for um, the um, soil. I got a pig named Kevin and Kobe that live in a house with me. I watched Justice League with these guys. The Zack Snyder cut, it was awesome with my pigs. <laughs> Now, first off, you'll notice that we have a greenhouse here. Why have a greenhouse? Well, we have fruiting vegetables, fruiting plants, and they've been fruiting throughout the entire winter. Most of these plants are about two years old or they're clones from plants that were two or three years old. We have a variety of peppers, which are prolific growers in the desert. We have a ghost pepper right here. We have Thai peppers, chili peppers, long, how to tell you, long hat peppers in here. These are Ukrainian peppers right here. These are shishito peppers, and right there we have a dwarf bell pepper plant. The idea is you have a limited amount of space, so you don't want to grow really, really big fruit. The beauty to hydroponics 
is you can actually use the earth itself to help you grow your system. We're using a flood and drain, a modified flood and drain system with fabric pots because it makes it easier for the plant's roots to breathe. We've also incorporated a buried reservoir system. That way the water stays at a nominal temperature between 70 and 74 degrees. Now, if you take a look at our growing substrate, we use hydrotin, which are the clay balls, and we also use a mixture of cocoa coir, which is basically the hair from a cocoa plant. Leave the rest in nature and you're good to go. I wish I would have started this when I was a little kid. Every day I wake up and I'm like, I wish I would have just done this earlier. It's giving me a new perspective on just my life, a, give a new perspective on health. My family's never been closer. This is my boy Malik, this is my little girl Charlie, and this is my son Devon. We work together as a family. My daughter takes care of the chickens, she takes care of the pigs. My son has basically planted almost everything that you see over there. He actually built this entire um, enclosure over here. Without them, I'd be nothing. With them, I am everything. So thank you guys. The best part of all of this is absolutely giving back. We want to give back in every way that we can. I want to have all of one of these in every single yard. You know, when you leave this world, man, you leave people with memories. And I want them to remember that I never gave up on them. I never wanted them to give up on each other. And that like literally we can make a difference. It's time for us to transfer some plants out here. We're gonna take some starters right here and we are going to set them into the aquaponics rig. This is a handy tool that I use. I'm really giving you guys a tip right here because no one knows about this. It's a piece of PVC and when you're gonna use it, to move lava rocks, reach inside, move these lava rocks out the way. Now, here's the beauty to aquaponics. There's no soil, guys. There's no soil whatsoever. And now we are going to take a squash that my wife started. We're gonna set it inside. We're gonna take that PVC, we're gonna pull it out. And that's it. That's how you transfer a plant in aquaponics. This all started because we had um, a power issue in our house and it cost an awful lot of money to get the wiring and everything else fixed. The fear with me was we had fish, we had plants, and they relied on a, a steady power source. If not, they could just die. Really set my mind to thinking, how can I possibly, possibly prevent this from ever happening? Use the power of the sun. This is an 800 watt four panel power station. We draw about 4,600 watts a day, which is about 4.6 kilowatts a day. Now the average household uses about 120 to 126 kilowatts a month. So this tiny little power pack system right here could actually power our house if we wanted it to. You're also gonna need to be able to conserve that energy during the night. That's where a battery bank comes into play. Now, a lot of people get solar and they're grid tied. What people don't realize is, when the power goes out, your power's still out, even if you have solar. So we chose to do an off-grid method to where we actually store our power so we have it in reserve when we need it. It just offers you so much of a sense of freedom that you really aren't aware of until you do it. I was so bad when we first started, I couldn't grow old in an old folks home. I'm not even kidding, man. We were just awful, awful gardeners. So the first thing that we actually successfully grew was basil. Got it from Lowe's, of course, Lowe's or Home Depot, because we were nervous, we were scared. And um, we got traditional gardening and ground gardening. We did that for two years. We got pretty decent at that. And then I started looking into hydroponics. We ended up getting a, a cheap hydroponics rig for $50 off of Facebook Market. None of the crap worked on it, but it gave, gave me an idea of how the systems work. Fast forward a month after that, I built my first hydroponics system. Um, fast forward six months after that, we started growing things from seed. Everything you see here, except for the um, ornamental plants, is all from seed. Plant that first seed. Like literally, depending on what you want to do, I would always recommend start with traditional gardening. I mean, a good test if you actually want to garden or not are mung beans and quick sprouting plants. Because if you can't change the water out three times a day, maybe gardening is not for you. It's so easy and it's a super green. It's a super green, it's so healthy for you. If you actually want to do it and you got that spark in you, just take that first step. Literally take that first step. You don't have to do it on a large scale. Like I said, not even an estate, not even a huge yard, not even a patio. I just showed you how to do it on a countertop. If you can grow a basil, a basil plant in a cup on your um, kitchen counter, pardon me, or in your windowsill, you can do everything that we're doing back there. Don't be intimidated, think big, and think outside of the box. What's up, y'all? 
little bit of onion action going on over here. I know a lot of people mistake them for leeks, but they're not. These are actually scrap onions. We got these from the grocery store. I think these are two or three years old now. They've been transferred from traditional gardening to hydroponics, and now they have their final spot in the aquaponics garden. We have some tatsoi over here, Asian cabbage, and this is very, very, very delicious. Um, we also have the super green kale. My wife likes to make her little kale shakes and you know her, her green shakes, her smoothies. And this comes in handy. Also, I love making kale chips. But that's a whole different video. This is our super green. And this is New Zealand spinach. Well, in New Zealand, it's just known as ice plant. And if you look at the backside, you'll actually see crystals on it. When it comes to aquaponics, it's not about how much stuff you're growing. It's about how much space you're taking up when you're growing it because you have a very limited amount of space. This entire beautiful New Zealand spinach plant only takes up about this much space in its aquaponics tank. Literally less space than one of these onion plants right here. We get to the lower grow bed and here's where we'll actually have our starter plants. The beauty to aquaponics is the plants grow about three times as fast as they normally would and they grow three times as big. Just take a look for yourselves. I was born and raised in the ghetto. It was kind of rough where I'm from. I think we got like 38 or 40 clear nights a year, so the sky is always gray. Raised by a single mom, she raised me and my brothers. I love my mom to death. She fostered my imagination because there wasn't much. If you were to get into anything on the streets, chances are if you grew up with me and you got into the streets, chances are you're either dead or you're locked up and you're not coming home anytime soon. We did, didn't have much for opportunity, so it was all on imagination. And um, I always wonder what it would be like to live on the moon and to live on Mars. And plus my mom always fostered my imagination with astronomy. She got me my first telescope when I was eight years old, got me my first um, map, I mean my first um, atlas of the sky when I was um, six years old. And she took me to the library, children's library when I was like five and a half, six, and it changed my life. It made me think outside the ghetto, it made me think outside the hood. And I've n basically never come back to earth since then. I want people to dream, man. I want them to dream. I want, to, I want them to know that things like this are possible. I'm 50 years old and I'm as much a kid as I've ever been because I get to play with some really awesome toys back here, man. You know, they say, um, man, this is so boring. I'd rather watch grass grow. Here's the thing. Have you ever watched grass grow? It's freaking exhilarating. It's one of the most exciting things. Watching a plant open up either in real time or with the on time lapse. It's really incredible. Brother, it's an amazing life, man, and it's there for everyone. Whether you have a yard, an estate, acres, or a patio, you can do this.